Chapter 5 Atmosphere, Composition and Structure Let's learn Composition of the atmosphere Structure of atmosphere Atmosphere, a big blanket Hold your hand in front of your face and breathe in deeply Now gently blow outwards towards your fingers What do you feel? Does it feel cool and tingly? What you felt blowing past the tips of your fingers is commonly referred to as air. It is surrounded by a thick layer of gases called the atmosphere. Earth is the only planet in solar system with an atmosphere that can sustain life. Brain Tickler Do all planets have air? The blanket of gases not only contains the air that we breathe, but also protects us from blasts of heat and radiations emanating from the sun. Earth's atmosphere is about 300 miles, 480 kilometers thick, but most of it is within 10 miles, 16 kilometers of the surface. Air pressure decreases with altitude. At sea level, air pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. At 10,000 feet, the air pressure is 10 pounds per square inch. There is also less oxygen to breathe as we go higher up. Considering the size of the earth, the atmosphere surrounding it is a relatively thin layer which is held to the earth by its gravitational pull. The total weight of earth's atmosphere is about 500 million tons and about 99% of its mass is concentrated within 32 kilometers from the Earth's surface. Composition of the Atmosphere The Earth's atmosphere has everything needed to support life on Earth. But what exactly does it contain? Let's take a look at the composition of the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, things have not always been balanced the way they are today. Info Hive Meteorology is the study of atmosphere and the processes that cause weather. The atmosphere is the air that plants and animals breathe to survive. The two main gases in air are nitrogen and oxygen. Together they form about 99% of dry air by volume. The remaining 1% is mostly argon and carbon dioxide. The atmosphere also contains tiny amounts of helium, hydrogen, neon, ozone, krypton and other gases. Nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere. It dilutes oxygen and prevents rapid burning at the Earth's surface. Living things need it to make proteins. Nitrogen cannot be used directly from the air. The nitrogen cycle is nature's way of supplying the nitrogen needed by living things. Plants need nitrogen to grow, but they cannot absorb it directly from the air. Microorganisms in the soil and plant roots absorb it and convert it to a form which plants can then use. This is called nitrogen fixation. Atmospheric nitrogen is also used to manufacture chemical fertilizers. Brain Tickler What will happen if CO2 level in atmosphere becomes too high? Oxygen is the most essential gas for living things to survive. It is necessary for respiration and combustion. Green plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis. Photosynthesis produces oxygen when CO2 and water are converted into glucose with the help of sunlight. Carbon dioxide acts as a blanket and prevents the escape of heat into outer space. It is responsible for the greenhouse effect on the earth. Humans or animals release carbon dioxide. The amount of carbon dioxide released by humans or animals seems to be equal to the amount used by plants, which makes for a perfect balance. Scientists are afraid that the burning of fossil fuels, such as coal and oil, is adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere than is being used up by plants. Deforestation is further increasing the CO2 levels with fewer plants to recycle it into oxygen. This disproportionate increase in carbon dioxide causes the earth to heat up and the phenomenon is called global warming. Water vapor is essential for life processes. It also prevents heat loss from the earth. 
water vapor and dust particles are present in the lower layer of atmosphere. Trace gases are found only in very small amounts. They include neon, helium, krypton, xenon, etc. The composition of air varies from place to place and with time. However, the composition of clean and dry air is fairly uniform in the lower layers up to a height of about 8 kilometers above mean sea level. Here are the tables. The table 1 shows constant components that is nitrogen N2 at 78.08%. Oxygen O2 20.95%, Argon AR 0.93%, Neon, Helium and Krypton compose the atmosphere at about 0.0001%. Table 2 shows the variable components. The composition of air shows that carbon dioxide CO2 is at 0.038%, water vapor H2O trace, methane CH2O O trace, sulfur dioxide SO2 trace, and ozone O3 trace. Structure of the atmosphere. Information received through radars and satellites tells us about the structure of our atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is divided into five main layers the exosphere, the thermosphere, the mesosphere, the stratosphere, and the troposphere. The atmosphere thins out in each higher layer until the gases dissipate in space. There is no distinct boundary between the atmosphere and space, but an imaginary line about 68 miles 110 kilometers from the surface, called the Karman line, is usually where scientists say atmosphere meets outer space. The atmosphere gets thinner as you go further up. Brain tickler. How is heat transferred throughout the Earth system? Here is a graph showing you different layers of the atmosphere. The troposphere is the layer next to the ground or surface of the Earth. It extends to about 30,000 to 50,000 feet high, 8 kilometers above poles and 18 kilometers above equator. This is where we live and even where planes fly. Around 90% of the mass of atmosphere is in troposphere. The troposphere is heated by the surface of the earth. Weather phenomena such as the formation of clouds, fog, wind, rainfall, lightning, precipitation etc. occur in this layer. The average temperature in troposphere decreases at the rate of 1 degree Celsius per 165 meters. This is called the normal lapse rate. Water vapor and dust particles are found only in this layer. The tropopause separates the troposphere and stratosphere. The stratosphere is the second layer that starts above the troposphere and ends about 31 miles 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The temperature does not drop with height in this layer. Ozone is abundant here and it heats the atmosphere while also absorbing harmful radiation from the sun. The air here is very dry, moves almost horizontally and it is about a thousand times thinner here than it is at sea level. The lower part of this layer provides ideal conditions for jet aircraft and balloons to fly as it is free from clouds and weather phenomena. Aeroplanes travel through this layer, which explains why clouds are seen below when one looks out of the window of a plane. The temperature remains constant up to a height of 20 kilometers and then increases with increasing altitude. Ozone layer is found in the lower part of stratosphere and so it is known as ozonosphere. Ozone gas is very important for us because it absorbs harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Chemical pollutants, especially chlorofluorocarbons through the ears have destroyed this layer. A large hole has been noticed in the ozone layer over Antarctica. The mesosphere starts at 31 miles 50 kilometers and extends to 53 miles 85 kilometers high. 
The top of the mesosphere, called the mesopause, is the coldest part of Earth's atmosphere, with temperatures averaging about minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which means minus 90 degrees Celsius. This layer is hard to study. Jets and balloons do not go high enough, and satellites and space shuttles orbit too high. However, scientists do not know that meteors burn up in this layer. The thermosphere extends from about 56 miles, 90 kilometers, to between 310 and 620 miles, 500 and 1000 kilometers. Temperatures can go up to 1500 degrees Celsius at this altitude. The one does not feel warm here, as thin air does not hold heat. The thermosphere is considered a part of Earth's atmosphere. But air density is so low that most of this layer is what is normally thought of as outer space. In fact, this is where the space shuttles fly and where the International Space Station orbits Earth. This is also the layer where the auroras occur. Charged particles from space collide with atoms and molecules in the thermosphere, exciting them into higher states of energy. The atoms shed this excess energy by emitting photons of light, which we see as the colorful aurora borealis and aurora australis. The lower part of thermosphere is called ionosphere, as it has ionized molecules. This layer reflects low-frequency radio waves back to Earth, thus aiding long-distance communication. The exosphere, the uppermost layer, is extremely thin. And it is here that the atmosphere merges into outer space. It is composed of very widely dispersed and light particles of hydrogen and helium. It goes all the way to ten thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface, and temperatures here may reach up to forty-five hundred degrees. Man-made satellites orbit the Earth in this layer. The density of air is very low. Structure of the atmosphere dictates the way the atmosphere behaves and controls the weather that develops near the surface of the Earth. Info Hive: Planet Mercury has no atmosphere. Brain tickler: Why do astronauts have to wear special suits in space? In troposphere, as altitude increases, air pressure decreases. As altitude increases, temperature decreases. Atmosphere, a big blanket. The atmosphere protects Earth like a big blanket of insulation. It absorbs the heat from the sun and then radiates the heat towards the surface of the Earth, keeping the Earth warm and habitable but not hot. This is called the greenhouse effect. It also keeps the overall temperature of the Earth fairly steady, especially between night and day. So we do not get too cold at night and too hot during the day. Without this blanket of protection, we would be baked alive by the heat of the sun during day and get frozen during night. Atmosphere has a layer of ozone which protects the Earth from sun's harmful ultraviolet radiations. Info Hive. Barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure. Atmosphere also allows light and sound to pass through, so that we can see and listen. The atmosphere also shields us from meteors. This big blanket also helps to form our weather patterns and climate. The weather keeps too much hot air from forming in one place and causes storms and rainfall. The water vapor gives rise to water cycle. All of these things are important to life and the Earth's ecology. So it is this mass of air that has made the conditions on the Earth supportive to life. Recap: Earth is surrounded by a thick layer of gases called the atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is divided into five main layers: the exosphere, the thermosphere, the mesosphere, the stratosphere, and troposphere. Around 90% of the mass of the atmosphere is in the troposphere. The top of the mesosphere, called the mesopause, is the coldest part of Earth's atmosphere. 
the exosphere the highest layer is extremely thin and it is here that atmosphere merges into outer space the atmosphere absorbs the heat from the sun and keeps the heat inside the atmosphere helping the earth to stay warm this is called the greenhouse effect